What is a RAG system? RAG stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. It is typically used for building Q&A question answering chat box on custom documents. It follows a two-step process. The first step is typically where you have your own custom data. You process these documents, you encode them, convert them into embeddings. And the second step is where you use this knowledge and augment a large language model's existing knowledge base. So this is where you do question answering search and generation of a response to your question. RAG systems help regular large language models to augment their information or augment their existing knowledge base with custom knowledge before generating answers. It is typically an alternative or often the first step before you fine tune large language models. And RAG systems have quickly become the de facto standard and architecture for building search and question answering systems. Let's understand a bit more in detail in terms of the two major steps to build and run a RAG system. The first step is document processing and encoding. This is where you're trying to take in your custom documents, your custom knowledge base. This is where custom documents are processed and chunked. These chunks are typically converted into embeddings with a large language model embedding model, which is usually a transformer model. These chunks and their corresponding embeddings or vectors are stored in a vector database, along with other metadata like the file name from where the document chunk is coming, the page number, and so on. Now, once your custom documents, your own knowledge base has been processed, chunked, converted to embeddings, and stored in a vector database, this is where you start building the RAG system, the actual question answering and the search part. So the second step is Q&A search and generation, where based on a user question or a query, the system retrieves relevant document chunks. So these are document chunks based on your custom knowledge base, which are similar to the question which is asked by the user. These chunks are passed on to the large language model along with your query to augment its knowledge. So this is where once the relevant document chunks related to a question are retrieved, our question along with those document chunks are sent to a LLM like ChatGPT saying that, hey, given these relevant sources of contextual information, can you answer this question truthfully? And then the large language model like ChatGPT generates a human-like response to the user question based on this contextual information. These are the two standard steps to build a RAG system. And now we will get into the architecture. So this is a standard RAG system architecture, again, following that two-step process. There's a lot going on in this diagram, so let's understand it step by step. So typically, the first step is you have some custom documents. These could be PDFs, these could be text documents, databases, and so on. So what we do is, in the first step, we use the document loader, which is dependent on the kind of data, whether it's PDF, text, CSVs, and so on. These document loaders will load up these document files, and they will extract the document text out of it. So in the second step, what we end up having is the text content of these documents extracted out. And then we need to create chunks or smaller entities of these documents, because Storing an entire document and representing it with a single embedding or vector may not be very useful. We need to store it in the form of shorter chunks like paragraphs and so on. So typically this is where we end up using a text splitter in this third step, which will split and chunk these documents into smaller paragraphs. The next step is once we have these document chunks after these document text goes out of the text splitter, in the fifth step, we will pass these into a LLM embedder model. Now, there are a lot of embedder models out there. OpenAI has some, which we will be using in the hands-on later on. We also have other embedding models available from Hugging Face, Sentence Transformers, and so on. So we will be using this LLM embedder model to take every document chunk and create a corresponding chunk embedding. And as you might know, an embedding is basically a vector representation of the meaning of some text. So every document chunk will have its corresponding embedding vector. Now, once we have the chunk embeddings, 
the next step is to store it in a vector database. So in the seventh step, as you can see here, we don't just store the embeddings. We also need to know that this embedding is the meaning or representation of which document chunk. So we store every document chunk along with its corresponding chunk embedding in a vector database. In our application, we will be using Chroma DB, but you are free to use other vector databases also. Now, once this is done, this kind of concludes the first step, which is the document processing and encoding, where we start off with some documents. We use a document loader to extract the text. We use a text splitter to convert it into chunks. We use the LLM embedder model to convert every chunk into an embedding, encode it into an embedding, and we store the chunk and its corresponding embedding into a vector database, along with some additional metadata like page number, or the file from which the chunk is coming, and so on. So now this concludes the first step. Now let's get into the second step, which is the Q&A search and generation. So this usually starts with a user who will ask a user query, send it to our application. Now, once the query is sent, we need to find out that, okay, based on the user's asked question, which are the document chunks which are relevant, which could be used to answer this question. So this is where the first step is to take this user query, which is some text, pass it again through the LLM embedder and convert it into a query embedding. So basically, just like every document chunk is converted into an embedding vector, similarly, the text of our user query is converted through the same embedding model into an embedding vector. Now the next step is we have a vector database retriever on top of our vector DB. This embedding is sent to this DB retriever. What the vector database does is it tries to figure out which are the document chunk embeddings which are similar to this question. So let's say we have a bunch of document chunks, and each of these document chunks have a corresponding embedding. Now what happens is our new question comes in. It goes through the same LLM embedder, and we have an embedding representation for this question. This embedding will be sent to the vector database through the retriever, and it will see, hey, out of all these document chunks, which are the embeddings which are closest to this Query embedding. It could be maybe this is very close. This is very close. Maybe this is very close. So what it will then do is it will return back a response saying that, hey, document number three, document number four, and document number one are the most similar document chunks. So this is the step where based on our input questions embedding, the DB retriever goes through the vector database, goes through all the chunk embeddings, and figures out which document chunks are similar and relevant and could be helpful to answer our question. Now, once we have the similar document chunks, we need to send our actual question and these relevant document chunks to a large language model like ChatGPT. So this is where the similar document chunks, along with our question, as you can see here, both of them are sent into a LangChain prompt template. This prompt template will construct a large language model prompt saying that, hey, given these relevant document chunks, given this relevant contextual information, can you answer this question only using these document chunks? And this is sent as a prompt to a large language model like ChatGPT. ChatGPT will generate a response based on these documents to answer our question to the best of its capability. And then that response is sent back to the user, which the user will see in the app interface. So it is very similar to the chatbot app we built earlier, except now we are trying to answer questions, not just by using ChatGPT's knowledge base when it was trained initially, but by using our custom knowledge base. So this is the RAG system. There are two steps. First step is to encode our custom knowledge base, our custom documents, store them in the vector database. Second step is to ask a question and to retrieve relevant document chunks from that vector database and use a large language model like ChatGPT to answer our question using our custom knowledge base.